Oh, hello, people. I'm here again. I'm here. It's Monday evening here in Colorado at 6.48 p.m. Uh, wow, on a March, what, 2nd, I think it is? March 2nd? Another whole month, 31 days in March. I was just reading something about the almanac says it's going to be a cold March, okay? A cold, cold play March. Um... I haven't even pulled up my declaimer. Let me do that now. Um, I guess you guys need to hear that it's a lot going on today, as always. We got so much stuff out on the um, on this uh, coronavirus. A lot of people' opinions. Uh, I think I'm going to be sharing a, a, a pastor's opinion today about it, uh, and then also I'm going to be sharing. Um, some news coming from uh, Israel. As we know, they had an election going on. Um, and then I'm going to be sharing uh, some other things dealing with children. As we heard today in Colorado, wow, Colorado is just upsetting my heart so much. Every day, some major crime going on in Colorado. Um, so I'm going to be just coming here now and... Uh, just uh, put some things up here. I forgot to do all this. I'm sorry, people. I had to get this lined up. But let me go here and um, get over to some news. And I'm going to be talking about this situation today in Colorado before I get to the Israel news. It's a lot of information out on this. It's a lot all over. Every Almost every uh, news station is talking about this event. You heard me talking about it before on my channel, about this stepmother was arrested in a disappearance of a missing Colorado boy who was 11 years old. Uh, Gannon, been missing so many months. And so I read a little bit here, but it's all on the news. And a lot of people suspected that she had, you know, was part of this ordeal. And I had my own opinions about it as well. And I, I was just saying, you know, when she came on the TV and showed her back, to the film, showed her back to the audience and wouldn't turn around and talk like a woman, talk like a woman who was concerned. I knew something wasn't right about the woman, okay? If you watch people mannerism, you can always pick up things about people. But um, let's go here and um, let's go here now and read a little bit of this. Um, it says here, the stepmother of a Colorado boy missing for over a month was arrested Monday in connection with his disappearance and presumed dead, authorities said. Uh, Letitia Strauss was arrested in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and is suspected to be extradited to Colorado on charges, including first-degree murder of a child and the death of 11-year-old Gannon Strauss. Storch, I'm not saying that right, but El Paso County Sheriff Bill Elder said, the boy remains missing. All evidence points to the disappearance of Gannon being foul play, FBI Denver Special Agent Dean Phillips said. I remember when they brought in the FBI, you know, because they was trying to wonder what was going on. And, uh, you know, so all of it's pointing to this woman being responsible for his death. Um, and they're going to still be continuing trying to find his body. It's just a sad situation. I have been praying about this for days and days, and a lot of people have been praying that he would be found alive. You know, every night on the news, I see something relating to missing children, missing alerts, alerts, alerts all over the place. So we have to continue praying. And today in my video, I'm going to be talking about this more, about the sex trafficking, drug trafficking, human trafficking going on with our children. And you know how important it is for us to watch our children. You know, we, we say, oh, well, uh, I just had my boyfriend to watch him. Oh, I just had my uncle to watch him. We need to really know who our relatives are, who our friends are, who people... We we associate with our when it comes to our children it's just so getting to be so urgently important people so urgently important so it says here too i'm gonna go ahead and finish this one i'm gonna let this go but um it says here uh oh the doctor the document uh laying out the reasons for Letitia strauss arrest was sealed and investigators and prosecutors declined to discuss the details right now it was not known if Strauss has a lawyer representing her yet. She also faces charges including child, sub child abuse, 
resulting in death, tampering with a deceased human body, and tampering with physical evidence, Elder said. The sheriff's office previously said that Stotch reported Gannon missing on January 27, saying he left to go to a friend's house in the afternoon. Authorities called him a runaway when it first asked the public for finding, help finding him. Three days later, authorities said he was considered a missing and endangered child because of the length of time he had been gone, his age and his reliance on medita medication. Authorities did not describe the medication. Gannon's mother, Lannon Hayout, H-I-O-T-T, -T, sobbed during the press conference announcing the arrest at times, leaning on Gannon's father, Al Slotch. I never thought I would be standing here. It's a nightmare, she said. So I'm going to leave it there, but it's all on the news. They got live videos out and everything, and I decided to go ahead and read it because there's so many uh, videos out and very emotional, very emotional. And uh, so it's just sad, people. So I'm going to go on over here now and show some other updates going on in the news today. I'm going to quickly go through them because there's so many of them to cover. But I do want to get to this one about the uh, about this uh, uh, sex trafficking with our children. I really want to stipulate on that more today than anything, how we need to be watching our children, watching our children, not trusting anybody with our children. Oh, my goodness. There's so much of this going on all over the world, not just Colorado, all over the world, people, is happening every day. So let me go ahead and go on over here and mute this out and get this to the uh, Israel news, and then I will get to some other news following, and then uh, I will talk about this other article that I want to talk about here. So let me go ahead and mute this out. <clears throat> Seven Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donation. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Voting polls across the Jewish state will close in one hour time after millions of Israelis flooded to voting stations for the third consecutive time in less than one year. Turkey has stepped up its offensive in Syria's northwestern Idlib region, officially declaring the launch of Operation Spring Shield. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan confirms that borders have been opened in his country for migrants to infiltrate into Europe. In one hour time, voting polls across Israel will close and immediately thereafter, the official exit polls will be made public. Since 7 o'clock this morning, millions of Israelis flooded the polling stations to cast their preferred ballots for Jerusalem's future leadership. According to the last projection polls, which were quite similar to the outcome of the previous Israeli elections, outgoing Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu and former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz are once again running neck and neck. Today's round of elections, the third attempt to break Jerusalem's deadlock in less than one year, is being held under the shadow of widespread concerns over the spread of the potentially deadly coronavirus. In efforts to alleviate public concerns, Israeli Health Minister Yaakov Litzman underscored the country's preparedness to secure the general public from potentially infected citizens. I hope that it will, it will not be any effect at all because we did all the things which we should have done and we have opened special uh, uh, places which people can vote. As part of Israel's efforts to stem out fears over the coronavirus, 15 special voting stations were established for the 5,630 Israelis that are currently under quarantine. People that want to, uh, to vote are coming. They will meet at the front uh, our, one of the uh, persons that will be fully protected to protect himself and uh, the surrounding people. He will actually uh, identify himself, get into the polling station, without any uh, direct contact with the, uh, with the committee of the, of the polling station. That's why we have two separate tents with a, a transparent wall. They will see him through the transparent wall. According to polls that aired on Israel's domestic media prior to the election, 7% of Israeli voters were considering staying at home due to coronavirus worries. The poll, however, did not coincide with voices heard on the Israeli street. Yes, of course I will go to vote. Uh, the, corona, the coronavirus is uh, basically more of a media 
the media pumping it and people are afraid. But I hope uh, it will be solved soon. Corona is a troubling feature, but I don't think there's much we can do about it. And just keep, try to keep distance from other people, not to stay put in one place and uh, hope for the best. The leading candidates in today's election race joined separately in efforts to quell fears over the coronavirus, focusing their statements after casting their own ballots on the importance of voting for the leadership of Jerusalem. The could chairperson, Benjamin Netanyahu, alongside his wife, Sarah, urged the public to exercise their democratic right with confidence. Go vote. Go vote. It's a proud day. This is a democracy. Uh, you have a, a great right that you should exercise with confidence. Uh, the corona uh, thing is completely under control. Today, we're, we've taken all the precautions that are necessary. People can go and vote with complete confidence. Thank you. Thank you. Netanyahu's main rival, Blue and White Chairperson Benny Gantz, also declared the day to be a celebration of Israel's democracy. While the past few days were embroiled in deceptive rhetoric and cynical bashing by the competing parties, Gantz urged the Israeli public to refrain from any kind of violence and to respect the democratic aspects of the day. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is, this is a celebration day for the Israeli society. I hope that everyone will go and vote. Of course, I support myself, but I respect any decision of any voter. It's about time that we'll be much more united, much more with one another, and less of ones against the other. Let us hope that this day will go well. Uh, I expect no one to, uh, to practice any kind of violence, whether it's by wars or whether it's by deeds. And let us all respect the democracy aspects of this day. Similar to the previous two elections that were held, former Defense Minister Victor Lieberman's Israel Beitenu party is projected to maintain its status as the so-called kingmaker for Jerusalem's seat of power. After casting his ballot in his home community, the West Bank settlement of Nukdim, Lieberman urged the public to vote for his party, which aims to weaken the rabbinic power hold over the Jewish state, which has been a point of contention among the country's mostly secular silent majority. In contrast to the voices heard by Israel's leading candidates, who repeatedly declare the elections to be a celebration of the country's democracy, Israeli President Reuven Rivlin sought to project the public's dismay over Jerusalem's political deadlock. The fact that Israelis are compelled to participate in an unprecedented third round of parliamentary elections portrays the deep political divide in Jerusalem and the unwillingness to find common ground in spite of domestic, regional and global challenges. That is why the Israeli head of state asked for the public's forgiveness and urged the political leadership in Jerusalem to act responsibly. I'm going to go ahead and show some other news, but I heard that Benjamin Nayahu had won the election prior to me getting on here doing this video, so I, I know I will come back and put another report later in another video. But he did win, I think, uh, Benjamin Nayahu. Okay, let me... Very Greeley News, thank you for joining me. Russia's highest volcano erupted today, sending an ash cloud 20,000 feet in the air. Surprisingly, the alert level for aircraft was only raised to orange, mostly because in this area where the plane routes travel over, they fly at a much higher level, um, about 30,000 feet. But they are an alert just in case maybe there's another eruption that's going to send the ash cloud up even higher. And then it would interfere with air traffic. I'm going to zoom out so you can see exactly where this volcano is at. There we go. We got the Aleutian Islands over here. If it did get any higher and the ash got into the aircraft's engines, yeah, it could be deadly. You can see several aircraft that are flying over that location. Like I said, they fly so high um, that they're above the area of the ash. But they are on alert. This flight here is currently going to Los Angeles. Coming from Shagan. I guess that's China. Oh, no. Yeah, China.
Yeah, we're still accepting flights coming in from China. On Wikipedia, they have a false color image of October 17, 2013 eruption. And you can see the ash there. This is a fairly young volcano. It's only about 6,000 years old. More recently, there was a very small eruption on October 25th of last year, 2019. Here's another image of the volcano. This was taken in 2006, July. This is the highest volcano in Siberia of Russia, Asian Russia, as they call it. And it is along a northern chain of volcanoes that are in that area. I believe there's about 30 of them in this area. According to Google Earth image data, this image here of the volcano was taken on June 13th of last year. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Look at that. So that's the reasoning why it is at an aviation level of orange and not red. Because the ash only went up 20,000 feet and the aircraft are flying at about 30,000 feet over this area. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions, put it down below. Thank you. Hey, what's up guys? In this video, you're going to see a asteroid come into the atmosphere, go past a volcano, and then you're going to see a large explosion. Don't know if this impacted the ground, but either way, it was a long duration event. You're going to watch this thing go through the air for about 15 seconds, disappear behind Mount Maripai that you see right here. That's a 10,000 foot volcano, and then a large flash after it makes impact or something you can't tell because it goes behind the volcano. I received this footage from a young lady by the name of Jenny Jackson. She says, hey man, watching the volcano feed again, and I just saw an asteroid come in by Mount Maripai, and it struck land. Crazy, need your help finding the actual location, and I want to know what happened. And here's the location right here in central Java. If you're standing over here looking at Mount Maripai, that flank is going to be on the right, and that flank is right here. So we're looking to the southeast. It's early in the morning on March 1st, around 6 o'clock a.m., and this thing comes in from the northeast, traveling southwest just like that so i think it went out into the ocean but you're going to see a large flash of light indicating that this thing did explode somewhere whether it be over land or out over the ocean i don't know it's difficult to tell because again it goes behind the volcano but here's the incredible footage from this location once again right here behind mount maripai down in indonesia traveling from the northeast headed southwest just an incredible video and she saw this on Volcanoverse, if I'm not mistaken. She recorded it off of her screen and shared it with me. But anyway, it occurred our time, February 29th at about 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which would have made it about 6 o'clock in the morning in Indonesia on March 1st. Here's the video. Just incredible. Again, Mount Maripai. And she zooms in at the bottom of her computer screen, and it shows Maripai right there. That's the volcano she's looking at. 2206 Universal Time. Watch to the left. Here it comes. And if you count, that thing is visible for about 15 seconds until it goes behind the volcano. It either lands in the ocean or on the ground. Watch, you're going to see a bright flash here in a minute. Looks like the sun is just getting ready to come up. Watch for the flash. Look at that. Okay, now we're going to do it again. And we're going to do the flash in slow motion. And I zoom in on the asteroid. Look at the low trajectory of that thing. Smoke trail behind it. That's no ordinary fireball. That's a small asteroid. That's pretty good size. That's at least the size of a, a truck, if not bigger. Goes behind the volcano. Disappears. And then here comes the large flash. Look at that. <laughs> Just incredible. Great observation by Jenny 
of a asteroid entering Earth's atmosphere down in central Java, Indonesia, early in the morning on March 1st, put on an incredible show. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe. This is Dabu7. It looks like panic buying is definitely setting in across the country. This is something we warned about at the beginning of last weekend. I'm hoping that many people that tune into our streams heeded the warning sign and got out ahead of the crowd and was able to get their supplies and did not get stuck with nothing. What we're seeing here is that major stores are getting wiped out left and right. This in turn has boosted the economy. It surged forward like a thousand points today. I expect a pullback after this at some point. But what we're seeing is people going out, just clearing the shelves in all types of states. Minnesota, Kentucky, Virginia. We have here what you're seeing. This is the Twin Cities, a store in the Twin Cities. San Diego and Southern California. This story here is Hawaii. Okay, talking about the Costco's getting wiped out in all these different regions. People not only hitting the Costco's, but any and every store that they can get their they can get their hands on to items in. Fresh water, spring water. And as I said the other day, when I was in the store, I noticed that the shelves were empty from sanitizer, and I got lucky and got the last bottles off the shelf. Then when I went back for spring water, I come to find out the same thing. They were getting wiped out. I went in the back of the Walmart, even went onto Walmart's trucks, checking them for spring water, and there was nothing. Never done that before, but yet that's what we did, and there was nothing to be found, nor no spring water in any of the dollar stores anywhere around. That's just the way that it is right now. There looks to be more shipments Coming to these stores, they don't look to be left barren, that's for sure. At least they're not saying that. I mean, if there was, you know, all these stores were saying, oh, we have no more shipments coming in, well, then they're not saying it. But everyone seems to be saying that they're expecting more shipments to come in, but we'll just see where things go from here. This is why we always say, have a plan. I've been saying this for years, talking about survival tactics and things that you can do to get ahead of the curve and to survive a situation like this. Join us on DLive. This is where I'm breaking down all types of content that gets censored on these other platforms. All the exclusive stuff can be found over here. On DLive, and there's also a replay tab to watch them from the beginning whenever you join. So link. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of... YouTube, Pastor Dow here. I guess it's my turn to go ahead and weigh in on this uh, coronavirus thing. And I realize that um, this virus is spreading fast all across the world. Now, some people want to come and tout uh, it's not real, it's, it's conspiracy theory and, and all that other stuff. Uh, I just happen to be, it's a fact. I think it's a fact. I think it's there. I think it's a real a viable threat. I really truly do. And no doubt economically it's going to have its ramifications here in this country because we receive a lot of exports, imports that come from China, an extraordinary amount of goods and services. And so here in about a month or two, we're going to start seeing bare shelves um, because we have a lot of stuff shipped in from China. Now, uh, the virus in itself from all I can ascertain and what I can gather is that it started in the meat market in Wuhan, China, Wuhan, China. And uh, something like 50 or 60 people end up with it. And the symptoms include um, coughing. Um, uh, what, what else? A fever, fever. Um, and then later on it developed into the shortness of breath. And of course, the incubation period on this, I think it's, it, it took like eight days now. Something about if this virus runs and if you have it uh, for 14 days, then after that, pretty much you become immune to it, allegedly. I don't know. It looks like they're trying to develop, you know, develop a vaccine for it. 
Uh, of course, my question would be is, is what else is involved in these vaccines or these vaccinations? All right. Um, preventative maintenance and stuff, what can you do? Um, uh, of course, everything, myself personally, it starts and has to do with a strong immune system. Um, you have to do things that are very, very strong. Now, I'm, I'm not here to prevent, diagnose, or cure in anything because I'm not a doctor. Neither do I profess to be a doctor, and I ain't going to be a doctor. All right? Um, but, you know, the one thing I know for sure is very, very strong for killing viruses is real, true, powerful oregano oil. Now, a lot of people claim um, that they know what oregano oil is powerful. Um, so, I mean, you know what that uh, a bottle of oregano oil is? Um, now, this one, I know for sure, is very powerful. Um, and you can only be on it for so long. It's just what I, what I would take. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, prior to traveling or something, I'm not saying this is the only one. Um, I may end up giving this guy a lot of business. I don't know, but I know it comes in a particular bottle like this. And it's um, it's very powerful. Let me see if I can put some peeves on here for a second and read what it says. Um, it says medical grade. And, it, of course, it's, it's all natural. Uh, four drops bottle, whatever it is. But it's a regular one. It's, it's, it's powerful. It's natural. Now, will it? Uh, prevent, cure, or all this stuff. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say it, and I ain't never said that. Um, it's just that that's what I would do for as preventative measures. And, and go would go in. Uh, of course, you know I'm a uh, a member of DoTerra. I would get some On Guard. I would uh, definitely make sure I'm loaded up on vitamin C. You know, and drinking plenty of water. Um, Staying away from some of these dense populated areas as much as you can. And if you can, um, try not to shake people's hands and definitely stop kissing on people. Um, stop that damn kissing stuff. Because um, you don't never know what the hell is out there and what people got on them. You start running around just kissing and smooching on everything. Stop that mess. Um, even I just seen a video. Uh, where uh, the Prime Minister of Germany, Angela Merkel, well, um, actually was turned down for a handshake. And it wasn't nothing intended. You know, everybody kind of laughed a little bit about this virus. But uh, let me go back to the original, um, what do you call it? The place where it actually started, okay? Wuhan, China. Now, you all know just as well as I do. Um, and in case many of you don't know, I'm, a, I'm an Israelite. Uh, I believe the Bible, and um, I believe that the Bible has a dietary law, and it's written out over there in Leviticus, the 11th chapter. In other words, uh, the Most High has given us foods to eat that is clean and foods to not eat that is unclean. He's the architect of these bodies, and he knows exactly what we need in order for them to function properly. You know just well as I do that um, Chinese and Japanese are just like the people in Louisiana. If it moves, they eat it. There are things that are not fit for human consumption, and you people need to get that through your head. It's just not seriously not fit for human consumption. And I've been following these dietary laws for over 30 years, and they've always done me somewhat good, and I'm going to continue to keep on doing it. I know uh, that other religions out there, like Christianity and other stuff, they do everything they can. That whenever the Most High says that this is what he means, is what he says, and it tells you clearly he don't change. By the time you get finished with religion and philosophy, the next thing you know, uh, the creator of the universe who wrote his will down in his book, he's unchanged a thousand times over. Now, I would be very careful about following a religion like that that tells you that he changes when he clearly tells you that he doesn't change. And if he had made the dietary law for us, and it was good 7,000 years ago, and guess what? It's good today. Um, and I think it will be behoove you to follow the wisdom of that book and do uh, what the Most High gave to Moses. Now, you don't have to. You don't have to. But me, my, myself, I choose to. 
And another thing I cho chose to do is read the book for myself um, and then direct people to what it says in the book so they can go and find out for themselves what it says. Um, but I'm telling you right now, I would not take my chances on people out here who um, like these Chinese um, and Christians out there. They eat anything moving. They eat snake, skunk, alligator, um, turtles, uh, scorpions, <laughs> um, bats. Um, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And if you know anything about the meat markets over in China, uh, they butcher that stuff and they put it out there at the market warm. And man, these people swim in eating unclean stuff. I know a lot of people are going to get upset with me, but that's okay. But I know that shrimp is a delicacy over here in America. I, I know people can't live without it. Um, but man, shrimp is nothing more than a sea maggot. Uh, the land maggot would be what flies produce. You know, when they lay their eggs and you see, you ever seen maggots crawling around or something? That's what shrimp is. Shrimp is nothing more than a sea maggot. Um, or a cockroach. It's basically of a cockroach. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's utterly amazing. You know, when you, if you just use a little bit of self-autonomy here, there are certain things that have literally been created to clean up this earth. And swine, pigs, is one of them. Uh, the Bible says it's not fit for consumption. Now, they will tell you um, that the dietary law has changed since we're under the New Testament, and it's all clean now. Uh, but I wouldn't take my chance in believing it because I've read the account and read the stories, and I cannot find anywhere in there where it says that he has made the thing which was unclean for his animals and food for consumption clean. The only thing that I've seen that he said that there, there was a people are unclean at one time, now they're clean, was when uh, the Most High allowed the Gentiles to come into the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I didn't mean to turn this into a preacher ceremony. I'm just dealing with facts. Because when you go back to where this, the ground zero, where this virus started over in Wuhan, China, uh, you know just well as I do, they eat everything, snails, lizards, um, anything, that, uh, rodents, uh, anything. And you can't go out here and start eating all these scavengers of the earth and not expect that there's going to be some type of ramifications for it. So I would also say clean up your diet because over here in America, another delicacy is that swine, that pig. You go to McDonald's, you go anywhere, breakfast menu. Is is ninety nine percent pig, sausage, bacon, ham. I mean, and then you you try to look for a steak or chicken. You man, you be remiss. You can't find it. You can't literally find it. So um, they're saying that Ground Zero is where this in China where this flu virus has started, and it, it's really truly taking out a lot of people, and things are gendering towards. Um, uh, what they will call kind of like an uh, immune immune system. Um, it's going to hit your immune system. It's hitting people's immune systems pretty pretty hard. And um, I, let me get this. I, if I was you, I would personally just, and this is only my advice. Again, I, I would try to, to go out and get some real potent oregano oil. And believe me, you're going to know it's potent because uh, you definitely got to dilute it. Um, Have they come up with a cure yet? Probably not. It's probably going to be a lot of politics involved with it as well. Uh, one country may come up with a cure for it or something to prevent it or something to keep the virus from actually running. Uh, right now, as it stands, there's no known cure. Um, but um, they, um, they're probably going to play politics with it. Um, and hold another country hostage. France or Italy, Rome, Italy right now is reeling um, because all the people that normally would go there is not going there. Now, the United States of America has added Iran and all Iraq, all these other countries over in the East um, to the travel ban list along with China and anything over there on that coast. Now, they're talking about even adding Mexico to it. And I haven't heard of any cases yet in Mexico I know that there are cases popping up all over the United States of America. 
Uh, so I think personally the best defense is a strong immune system, a very strong immune system in order to ward off a lot of these um, diseases uh, that are coming up on us in this day at time and hour. And of course, I always would throw in there, first and foremost, uh, a good, strong relationship with the Messiah. I hope I said something to stimulate thought. Y'all be encouraged. King is coming. Contributor. He serves on both Pfizer's and Illumina's boards. Uh, and Dr. Matt McCarthy, an infectious disease physician who is the author of Superbugs, The Race to Stop an Epidemic. What do you do with people in the emergency room if you can't test them? Well, we call and we try to test. We isolate them. We have an outstanding team of, uh, of uh, infection control practitioners who know how to handle this, but they're hamstrung by the fact that we don't have a diagnostic test available. Are people getting sent home? Because I read reports of that over the weekend. We're not sending people home. We're making sure they get what supportive care we can give. But keep in mind, we now have this um, in New York State, right? The person who tested positive was only the 32nd test we've done in this state. That is a national scandal. They are testing 10,000 a day in some countries, and we can't get this off the ground. I'm a practitioner on the firing line, and I don't have the tools to properly care for patients today. The other challenge is that the providers can't take proper precautions if they can't uh, right. test. You've been talking about this for weeks. Uh, yeah, that th this is what we need to do. On the uh, you know on the therapeutic, I think this meeting today is focused on vaccines. We need to have a vaccine strategy. I think a vaccine is a year or two away. Right. Uh, I think we need to think about what we're going to have in the fall to be a backstop to this when this. Hopefully this will start to dissipate in July and August, but it's going to probably come back in the fall. And then what next? And the only thing that could be available in the near term is a therapeutic. Uh, you know, if we have an antibody-based like yeah. prophylaxis or a drug, because the vaccine is much longer. Why isn't something uh, existing in the HIV regimen that, that might work on, on a... Uh, well, we have a, an HIV drug, Calitra, that we're studying right now. It's in a clinical trial. That information is not going to be available for a while. The message today is that we are hearing from this administration that the risk is low and that things are probably going to be okay. You don't need to change your lifestyle. That's simply not true. There are going to be thousands of cases here. We have already moved from containment to mitigation. We are trying to lessen the severity here. You are going to see widespread disruption to daily life. Do not believe the false reassurance. So what does that mean in terms of what people should do on a daily basis? Well, look, I, I think that I think we're going to have outbreaks here in the U.S. There's no question about that. I think in, in parts of the country, we're past the point where we can contain this. We're going to have to look towards mitigation, Washington State, California. It doesn't need to become epidemic here in the United States. We have a much more advanced health care system. We have better infection control procedures in hospitals. I think we have the capacity to do that. I agree. We need to start taking more aggressive steps right now to make sure that this doesn't become so epidemic. China, so we had don't look like Wuhan. China had testing. How did China, uh, were China they had able testing. to possibly be on the downside of yep. the epidemic? How did they do Well, that? and there's also something called the boomerang effect, which we may be seeing in Hubei right now, which is that places we think are clear are starting to have rates creep up. We may see things bounce back. But the key here is do not believe the false reassurance. I'm telling you, the cases are about to surge, and only then can we make informed decisions. Doesn't that lower quarantine. the denominator on the, on the mortality? Absolutely. So if we're talking about mortality rate, I see numbers like 1% to 2% thrown around. I don't believe that. The modeling we're using, we're using data out of Korea. We think that's the best And approach. what is that? 0.2, 0.4%. So that's twice as bad as a seasonal Correct. flu. Correct. So a very bad flu season. Keep in mind, flu kills 25 to 69,000 right. Americans. So well, a well, very the, bad the flu season. The panic that has been caused already in, in the economic effects. So widespread surveillance is going to start giving us information so that we can make these informed decisions about whether March Madness needs to be canceled. For a while, this is going to be regional. You're going to have regional outbreaks where you're going to have more focus on it in certain parts of the country. Washington State, we're probably a couple of weeks away from some significant measures in Washington State to try to mitigate spread in Northern right. California. As well. well, we have a lot of undiagnosed cases to his point right now. There's probably, you know, low thousands of cases in this country that we now need to turn over the card on. So we're going we're gonna to have a surge in cases before we start to catch up to the actual level of spread. That's right. We're going to see school closures here, uh, definitely. You know, we're, we're hearing that life's going to go about uh, just like normal. That's not true. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries helps you mix and match in perfect harmony. It's the Lazy Boy Trade-In Event. We'll haul your old furniture for free with every trade-in at Lazy Boy.
Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. In the East Bay, an Oakland dental surgeon is now under arrest, accused of human trafficking and sex crimes against children. Court records filed in Contra Costa County show that Cassidy Lavarini Doyle faces seven felony counts, including attempted kidnapping. According to our media partner, the Bay Area News Group, Doyle offered to buy two young girls for $30,000. The state attorney general's office has moved to revoke Doyle's dental license, saying the allegations gave state prosecutors grave concerns about him interacting with children. Okay, people, I just want to show that real quick. I don't care about the lazy boy thing, although I need another new recliner, but <laughs> that's not what I want to show. I want to show the human trafficking going on, the stuff going on with our children, our grandchildren, other people, grandchildren, all around the country, all around the world, all this, all this stuff going on, people, all this stuff going on, making sure I have that not unmuted. Uh, Wow, your child is worth $300,000 a year to human traffickers. This is an article came out here February 4, 2020. It's not an old article from 2015 or way back. It's right now. And it's just getting escalating and escalating and escalating, people. Escalating every day. I know this week I, was, I pray every night over the, uh, the alerts that go across the Facebook page and go across the TV or whatever praying for God to stop them, send angels to stop them, uh, get them back home alive. Uh, this is something I do consistently. And, uh, and so I want to just come and show you this. Uh, I was just reading something today about another, uh, another person who is uh, praying. I will show that in a minute here, in a minute. But they are praying every morning over the schools and over the abortions and all of the things going on. But let me go ahead and read this to you and let you get some understanding. Then I'm going to come here to the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha, and read something that's really interesting. I just thought it was interesting. It tied right in with what I'm talking about here now. But um, these predators will take the time to know them. Listen to that. Listen to that, people. These predators will take the time to know them even if it takes a year. They will take the time because our children, our young adults, are worth up to $300,000 a year to them, says Sheila Romellen, a co-chair of the Low County Human Trafficking Task Force. Romellen, who hosted a community address on trafficking January 22 at the Bluffton Library, is also founder and executive director of the Fresh Start Healing Heart, a local nonprofit that works to rescue and heal human traffickers survivors. The task force is a coalition that comes under the South Carolina Office of the Attorney General and covers Bulford, Jasper, Hampton, Collecto, uh, Collecton, and Allendale counties. Okay, Allendale counties. One of the things we are seeing is the majority of the clients of Fresh Start in the local area have been recruit, recruited through boyfriending, do you get that? Boyfriending, through friends of their own or through the internet, she said. A lot of that has been somebody, a lot of that has been somebody that they met online, gotten to know. What did our parents say from the beginning? Do not talk to strangers. That's what my grandmother taught me. Do not talk to strangers, do not eat from strangers, do not sleep at strangers' houses. That's what my grandmother grew us with all our life. We only slept with our cousins, our families, our grandpa, our grandma. We never slept, spent the night with somebody over somebody's neighbor's house. It's going on a lot, even in my own family, going on with some of the grandchildren occasionally. I do not like it. I do not put up with it. I do not recommend it. I don't know why people are allowing their children to sleep with uh, sleepover parties and, 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 and pillow fights and whatever you want to call it, people. You don't know who's at that person's house. You don't know who's coming there. You don't know what they're doing. I don't know why you even allow it to happen. I don't even know why you allow it to happen. I'm not saying, I'm not accusing you, but I know it goes on in a lot of homes, a lot of homes across America. It goes on. 
People spending the night with children, five, uh, eight boys sleeping together. And then you want to know why your son want to be homosexual, gay. You know, they have all these things going on. Uh, 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 you know, this, all these things are happening. All these things are happening. And it says here, do not open a door to somebody you do not know. We always was like this growing up. No joke about it. Pretty much all the neighbors in my community knew one another. Everybody knew one another's kids. They knew one another. Uh, uh, grandmas, grandpas, uh, where they worked at, all this stuff. We always grew up in, in, in Ocala, Florida, where I grew up at. We always knew these things was going on. Everybody was taking care of everybody's child. You know, today it's like nobody want to get involved. And if they are involved, they are molesting your child. They are raping your child. They are uh, attacking your child. Uh, you know, we need to be really aware of all these things going on. It's just so getting to be so much of this going on. So, it's, so she says here, can you imagine the feeling that we would have if we walked by a dark alley and we saw our child talking to somebody we do not know? Yet every day they are doing that on the internet, said Duffy Stone, 14th Circuit Solicitor at the meeting. Nobody's breaking into our house anymore through windows. They don't need to. They can come through in on our child's cell phone. Our child's cell phone. Absolutely, absolutely, people. Our child's cell phone. And I, I was just talking to somebody this weekend about something I didn't like. You know, they're having parties. You're having a party. You're having adult parties. And you want children to come over and be with your child or be with, associated with somebody at your household. And, you know, and, and fathers and mothers go send their child to a strange house. They didn't know, know nothing about. They don't know the people there. And, you know, this is what's going on. We need to stop it, people. Human trafficking is big business, big business, as she's showing you here now. And I'm going to just read a little bit more of it, and you can read the rest in the description box. But I'm telling you, she says here, Stone continued, the Pew Institute did a study in 2018. At that time, 95% of our children had access to cell phones, 45% of which were spending most of all their time on those cell phones. That same year, 2018, the city the center, I'm sorry, for missing and exploded children reported 18 million cyber tips on exploitation of children. 18 million, 98% of the offenders were strangers. 98% of the offenders were strangers. Okay, do you get that? Wow, it's sad. It really is sad. It really is sad. The Department of Homeland Security recently released a report stating that in 2018, the United States National Human Trafficking Hotline was contacted 41,088 times and reported 10,949 cases of human trafficking, a number that has grown each year. What does a victim of human trafficking look like? Catherine Moorhead is the director of the Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, and Human Trafficking Programs at the South Carolina Office of Attorney General Alan Winston. When you're talking about children, you need to be concerned. If they're starting to have a lot of absences in school, disappearing on the weekends, they can't tell you where they've been. They look like they are malnourished. Uh, they are tired. They are withdrawn from peers. Uh, if they're with someone and the person's not allowing them to speak for themselves, she said. This goes on a lot, too. Not allowing the children to speak for themselves. Shutting them up. Telling them, uh, well, oh, yeah, I would take you to Disneyland. I would take you to Disney World. I would buy you this coat you wanted last year. I would buy you a new cell phone. Whatever. You know, that's what they do to these children to shut them up. Giving them all kind of ideas in their head. Oh, well, I'll give you money. I'll give you this. People, we need to be aware of our children who they with. I don't care if they're uncles. I don't care if they're daddies. I don't care who they are. You need to know where your child is, what they're doing and who they with and what's going on with your child. And I'm just like ready to join this lady in Colorado right now who have the uh, this lady arrested for maybe the murder of her 11-year-old son. I told my husband, I'm about ready to go and stand on a, 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 a board myself and talk against it because it's too much of it's happening, people. I don't know why people can't keep up with where their children are going and what they're doing. I don't know. I know when I was growing up, I had to work two jobs. Uh, my children was home at night. And I had one child that was always trying to slip out when I'm working. 
And, you know, we try to correct her and all these things. But I'm telling you, it's not an easy job. But we got to find out. At least I say, praise God, all my children are in their 40s today. And right now, I'm praising God that they're alive. And I hope they stay alive. But I'm telling you, we need to be understanding where our children are at and what they're doing and who they associate with. You the mother, you the grandmother, you should talk up about about it. Cause right now I could I, I really I, I'm I know I'm having a lot of things in my own family that I want to deal with. And sometimes I have to just pray and pray. And we got a lot of people praying about their families right now, their children right now. We just need to be understanding our children, communicating with our children, listening to our children, and not letting them feel afraid of us or afraid of nobody. That's, I think there's a lot of fear out there going across the, the planet for our children. Our children are fearful. They're scared to talk about the stuff. They're scared to talk about, well, I was with this man and he did this to me or who did this to me. We need to be understanding and developing a relationship with our children where they can talk to us about anything, anything, people, anything, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to just go here. Uh, but it says here... Uh, are they walking around with multiple motel keys? Oh my goodness, I that's something I never thought about. They say, uh, is the child walking around with multiple cell phones? Are they dressing in a more provocative fashion? These are some of the red flags that indicate uh, a person is being trafficked. Trafficked, okay? So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to go over here and play this other video I want to play here. Uh, if I hold on a minute. I, I got to get it to stop here. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to play this real quick, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Wow, I, 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 I just can't believe the stuff happening. Walks ...calling for an end to abortion. Organizers with Love Life say they expected thousands to join pro-life events in Charlotte, Raleigh, and Greensboro outside abortion centers. The group says it is working to help children by focusing on foster care and adoption options. Okay, uh, that's just an article. I will post it in the description box, but they're talking about how they're getting together to go against this abortion going on. And that is another reason why we're having all these problems with plagues and pestilences and crime and, 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 and all this, these things going to be coming across the earth. And let me go here and read something from the Apocalypse before I forget, the Apocrypha, uh, before I forget about it. Okay, it fits right in with what I'm talking about here in Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, 11th chapter, and I'm just going to read it out of my book here because I don't have it on the screen, but it's talking about here, listen to what this says. It's just so important, people. Wisdom. We need to get wisdom. Wisdom. It says here, wisdom, lift up the head of him that is of low degree, decree, and make of him to sit among great men. And I'm going to make sure I have my, don't, I'm not muted out. Because sometimes I get, okay, I am muted out. That's good. I just want to make sure. So it says here, the second verse, commend, listen to this, commend not a man for his beauty. Commend not a man for his beauty. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. The bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. Boast not of thy clothing and raiment, and exalt not thyself in the day of honor. For the works of the Lord are wonderful, and his works among men are hidden. Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of has worn the crown. Many mighty men have been greatly dis disgraced, and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first and then rebuke. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not. And sit not in judgment with sinners. Sit not in judgment with sinners, people. My son, meddle not with many matters. For if thou meddle much, thou shalt not be innocent. And if thou follow after, thou shalt not obtain, neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. 
There is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste, and is so much the more behind, and is so much the more behind. Again, there is another that is slow and have need of help, one in ability and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looketh upon him for good and set him up from his low estate. And I'm just going to stop there. It's a long chapter, got 34 verses, but I wanted you to really get that about the outer appearance. You can't judge people by how they look, what they look like. Oh, she looks so nice. Oh, he looks so nice. Oh, he's wearing Nike shoes and uh, Nike hats and uh, whatever. Oh, he drives, them a he, he drives this nice car. And this is what we grow up, society has grown us up and have conditioned our children that when a man got a tie and a suit on and driving a nice car and all that, you know, they got to be a nice person. And these are your main enemies today. These, that's women, that, women, that woman on the news today, you look at her, the, the, the stepmother. She lied before the screen and told them, oh, yeah, I would never hurt him. And, you know, I'm just trying to tell you, we, we cannot trust the outer appearances of people. You know, I, I'm really glad when I can meet a man who have character. You know, I was so happy to meet my husband when I met him. He had character. You know, but you, you, you really got to ask the Lord. You got to examine. You got to ask the Lord to give you signs and signs and more signs. You, you really have to take your husband uh, home to meet mama and daddy. You have to take your uh, wife home to meet mama and daddy. You have to really know who they are about, what they are about. If you go and read this Apocrypha, oh my goodness, such a wonderful book. It really is. I'm, I'm learning all kinds of things reading it about relationships, about how uh, when they want to bring home a woman to meet the mother and the father, and the guys say, what stock are you from? Uh, are you my tribe? Uh, uh, what stock are you from? You know, we need to examine people, people. We need to examine people. You know, you sure want us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We need to be really investigating, investigating, investigating on people, people, especially mixing with your family and your children. You need to really do that today. So I just wanted to come here and bring this out today in my video. I'm going to go and close now. I'm going to go over to Maranatha. The Lord is coming and we're going to go and end this video with, uh, this message. I thought it was interesting. I just asked the father what the, what the, what to talk about here. He gave me October 25th. I'm going to go on down and scroll down to October 25th. Um, it's talking about the earth depopulated. <laughs> how could he throw that in there? Yeah, I just like, I love the father, how he do these things. Cause my husband will tell you, I was just trying to hurry to get this video out today because I had been trying to take my echinacea last night. I had to take an echinacea trying to get a little nauseated and stuff with the flu and all these things going around. And I felt a lot better today. So I'm telling you echinacea as uh, Pastor Dowell just mentioned, uh, the organic oil. Uh, I have oregano, oregano oil. I think I do have some of that here. But I haven't really tried that one yet. But I know I've been using them, the uh, echinacea and myrrh. And I was telling you guys it's on sale all the time at Swanson. Uh, Swanson all the time have it. SwansonVitamins.com uh, for like $3.34 or something, a thing for 60 capsules. But you guys need to keep these things around in your households. Absolutely keep them. They are really effective. You don't have to go and take a flu shot and all these things, these vaccines. I would stay away from them. Stay away from them, people. Uh, even if they invent one, stay away from it. October 25, let me go ahead and put this here. October 25, the earth depopulated. So let's go ahead and listen to this, and I'll let you guys go.
Okay, people, I don't know why that's not working. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it from the, the book itself. I'll read it myself. I don't know. Sometimes these electronics just mess up on you, you know. So let me go ahead and go to page 306 and read that to you real quickly. Uh, the Earth that Populated. <clears throat> if I would have known that, I would have had my husband read it. But I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, let me see here, 306. I know time is going, but just be patient with me. Uh, we just really have to get these videos out because uh, just so much going on. Trying to encourage you, instruct you uh, to do the right thing and try to keep close to the Father because it's just times are getting crazy. But this is coming from the earth to populate. It comes from Jeremiah 4, 23, 20, Jeremiah 4, 23 to 25. I beheld and the earth, I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void and the heavens and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. Jeremiah 4, 23 to 25. At the coming of Christ, the wicked are blotted from the face of the whole earth, consumed with the spirit of his mouth, and destroyed by the brightness of his glory. Christ takes his people to the city of God, and the earth is emptied of his inhabitants. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth it, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. The land shall be utterly emptied, and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken his word, because they have transgressed the laws. That's why I tell you all these things are happening, because we have transgressed the laws. We have did our own thing, we are doing all kind of sins and evil all around us people every day as you know already but they have done this they have transgressed the laws changed the audience broken the everlasting covenant therefore have the curse devoured the earth and they shall dwell therein are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned isaiah 21 isaiah 24 1 3 5 6 the whole earth appears like a desolate wilderness the ruins of cities and villages destroyed by the earthquake, uprooted trees, ragged rocks thrown out by the sea, a tone of the earth itself, are scattered over its surface, while vast caverns mark the spot where the mountains have been rent from their foundations. Now the event takes place, foreshadowed in the last solemn service of the Day of Atonement, when the ministration in the Holy of Holies has been completed. And the sins of Israel has been removed from the sanctuary by virtue of the blood of the sin offering. Then the scapegoat was presented alive before the Lord. And in the presence of the congregation, the high priest confessed over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. Leviticus 16.21 In like manner, when the work of the atonement in the heavenly sanctuary has been completed, then in the presence of God and heavenly angels and the host of the redeemed, the sins of God's people will be placed upon Satan. He will be declared guilty of all the evil which he has caused them to commit. Hallelujah. That day is coming. I can't wait for that day to come when Father deal with Satan himself. And so we need to be getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, people, getting ready, getting ready. So I'm going to just end this video now. I really thank you guys for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need of mission fields. May Yahuwah HaMashiach richly bless each and every one of you. Send offerings to marner.camway at gmail.com at PayPal. Uh, mail in your donations, as many of you do. Fill my cup ministries, post office box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. So we really thank you for all your prayers and for all your uh, constant contributions and all your support and emails and letters and uh, gifts uh, of anything of you know you always been very faithful to fill my cup I really appreciate each and every one of you so I'm gonna go now people I ask that you please continue to share the videos and uh, like I said today please watch your children it's so urgently important to watch our children right now stop taking things for granted oh she could just walk down to the corner store it's not that far away 
Well, you know, I'm telling you, they're waiting at the grocery stores. They're waiting at the corner stores. They're waiting at the, uh, 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 what's this place they used to go? Skating rings, skating rings, movie theaters, uh, bus stations, whatever. They are waiting. They have all these men on assignment. They get $300,000 a year or more, people, for your children. Please, 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 please understand how important this is. Father, be with the people watching today. Thank them, uh, help them to understand that you are coming soon and that we are to still continue and work and work and work while it's day because it is getting very dark very soon. Everything's going on wrong that could go wrong, Father. You said that everything shaken that can be shaken will be shaken. It's already happening all around us, Father. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with all your people, uh, all your people in the prayer box every man woman boy girl we lift them up to you father we we'll ask that you supply all of their needs whether they spiritual mentally physically uh we just know we need you more than ever we can do nothing without you oh we just love you i lift you up father we thank you for your glory your wonderful glory your wonderful 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 love for us your care for us we bind satan and all his evil angels below yamanif mentioned and unmentioned known and unknown we bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way we ask for your Holy Spirit to cover your people. Cover us with the blood of Yeshua Messiah. Keeping us close to your bosom, Father, this day, these days of evil. So we thank you and we ask that you please come quickly. Please come quickly. Please come quickly. And we just thank you and we love you. We thank you. We ask these blessings in your name and the mighty name of Yeshua Messiah. So I'm going to go now, people. I'm just going to say shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. I thank you for watching and listening. Thank you for taking this time with me to go through these things. Uh, about an a hour and six minutes. So thank you for watching. And I'll be back when I can with another video. So much going on. Prepare, prepare, prepare. We've been seeing everybody talking about it. Prepare, keep prepared, people. Keep prepared. Pray and fast and pray and seek the Lord's face while he can be found. I thank you so much. I'm going to go now and I'll see you guys in another video. Shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Bye-bye. Love you so much. Bye-bye.